Quality, not quantity. That's what is going to define the 2025 hurricane season. But it's all over. It's official. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you to do some forecast verification. We always do these on our long-range forecast. Hold ourselves accountable. See what worked. See what didn't. And learn from them. We're going to start here with our own landfall hotspots for the 2025 hurricane season. We did not forecast numbers. We'll get into NOAA's numbers and talk about how they did coming up at toward the end of this video. But we're going to start right here and get right into it. I think... The best calls, and please don't confuse, I, I don't want to say best calls, and I'm not, I don't want to claim victory on people, so to speak. We don't want these to happen. This is what we forecast to happen, and I want to be clear about that because obviously we are still thinking about our friends in Jamaica that were impacted by Melissa and Chantal uh, was a high impact storm for sure, even as a tropical storm in parts of the Carolinas. So what we say verified obviously didn't want to happen. In terms of the hotspots, the, I think the best take that we had during the 2025 or prior to the 2025 hurricane season, we drew this map in April, was the Greater Antilles. We had a lot of threats on the Northeast Caribbean. Of course, we had Melissa come up like this. Um, we had Imelda work its way up like this. We had Chantal come in um, into the Carolinas, bringing some big-time flooding in North Carolina. We had those brushes with Umberto as well. Uh, that did cause a lot of damage in coastal North Carolina, even without the direct impact. So the, the best takes that we had in our preseason forecast was an active storm track like this. We had Florida in the orange because depending upon what the steering current was, it could either nudge further in, and if, honestly, Umberto wasn't there, uh, Imelda would have likely made landfall on the east coast of Florida or somewhere in South or North Carolina as well. So we likely would have had a hurricane landfall had, had not been for that Fujiwara that Umberto did and kind of yanked Imelda away from the U.S. coast. Again, thankfully. So I think those forecast verifications worked. The other one that worked was the low chance for impacts for the most part in New England. We had uh, Cape Cod into eastern Massachusetts, Rhode Island, highlighted in the orange. Same reason as Florida was highlighted in the orange, because what was the steering current going to look like at that time that a storm would be out there? And I wasn't sure if we were going to see it come up like that or go out. We now know that everything pretty much went like this. The other take was to have Bermuda. We thought the recur was going to be there, uh, that Bermuda would be in the crosshairs, and they were, unfortunately, from several different storms. The other good take was the low impact for the Gulf, and the only one to make landfall in the Western Gulf was Barry early on in the season. That was in Mexico, and then some of its remnants kind of drifted up into the mountains of Mexico as well. Uh, the other good take, the worst take, and that's why I think overall we're going to give this a C plus. Let me know how you think the forecast panned out. I would like to know what you guys think about this hotspot map. It was the Eastern Gulf. I thought for sure that we would have something develop in October in the gyre and lift up in this direction. It did not. It was suppressed enough that we did not have anything like that. Um, Typically in a La Nina, you're looking at something in the Gulf, and it was quiet, which is obviously a good thing. We need a break. Um, so I'm going to give this overall long-range forecast here a C-plus with the best forecast, unfortunately, for the Greater Antilles, the Outer Banks, those two hot zones, and the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Northeast Caribbean. The hot spots there, unfortunately, worked out. So that's what we were kind of looking at their hotspot for the Yucatan also didn't really work out. So all of this here again, and that's a byproduct of the gyre just not coming back around. So don't take my word for it. And all of these lines that I am drawing here, I want to show you what actually happened with all of the plots, a lot of data coming in here to show you exactly what happened during the 2025 hurricane season. Again, post in the comments where you, uh, what you think the forecast looked like and what it panned out also want to bring your attention something new that we are starting here on the channel different uh, subscription tiers that you can be a part of um you can look at those in the member things and you can have uh unlock different perks when it comes to being a member and a subscriber on the just weather channel so we just rolled that out we're going to have much more information on that going forward but just wanted to bring that uh, your to your attention that's going to be in the members section of um uh, 
the Just Weather channel. So I, I appreciate you guys taking a look at that. 2025 hurricane season. There are all the tracks. There are the recurves again. And then my head is hiding Barry. That was a tropical storm way down there in Mexico. And then its remnants kind of fizzled out inland of Mexico, uh, in central Mexico. I mentioned before quantity, not quality, or quality, not quantity. Reverse that. Um, three category five storms, only the second time on record that has happened. 2005 was the other one. Extremely rare to have that. Also, in addition to that, we had the first four hurricane, the first four uh, named storms became hurricanes, which is also, or the first, uh, the first four hurricane, the first, excuse me, the first three hurricanes becoming major hurricanes. That was also uh, a record breaking thing. The last time that it happened was a hundred years ago. So wild stuff happening in a, with the exception of Melissa, a very qu quiet year, would you call it that? This is what Noah came out with in May, right before hurricane season. Now, most of this did fall into their range. Uh, they gave the opportunity for a slightly below average season, but obviously I think they were expecting, judging by these numbers, an above average season when you take into account the number of storms. They forecast 13 to 19, we got 13. Uh, six to 10 of those becoming hurricanes, we got five. Uh, the nail on the head here was the major storms. They forecast three to five. We had four of those. And as mentioned, um, three of those becoming Cat 5 hurricanes. So just a wild year all around. The averages, by the way, are at the bottom there, 14, 7, and 3 when it comes to those. Here are the names again. Aaron becoming a Cat 5. Gabrielle becoming a Category 4. Umberto, the other Category 5. And then, unfortunately, the season's last storm happened to be the most impactful. Melissa becoming a Category 5 hurricane. We know what it did to Western Jamaica, really the entire island, but specifically Western Jamaica, where it may landfall. And then, of course, Cuba and then the Turks and Caicos high impact storm no doubt that's the last time we're ever going to see Melissa that's a no doubter going to be retired now there's a couple of ways to characterize the season and I, I use this to um, kind of combat the narrative of okay well they just name every storm well, there's another metric to measure the season other than name storm to kind of combat that narrative that no, they don't name storms to kind of pad their forecast because there's something called ACE, and that stands for Accumulated Cyclone Energy. And for the season, we had 132.6 ACE units. The longer the storm's out there, the stronger it gets, the more ACE units it piles up once it becomes a tropical storm. And then it continues to generate ACE until it becomes post-tropical or falls back down into a tropical depression. The average is 122.5. So from an intensity standpoint, we were above average. And again, that was helped along by three category five hurricanes. That is in three long range or long track category fives that were out there for a while, especially Aaron, especially Umberto. Um, and then Melissa, of course, the powerhouse that's got onto the record books or got into the record books. Uh, we talked about this in real time when we were tracking it, but it's central pressure dropped below 900, dropped below 895. It bottomed out at 892. And this is going to be something that we watch as uh, every year there's reanalysis done by NOAA and the National Hurricane Center. There are, there are several storms, and I think they're halfway done. So once we get deeper into the offseason, we're going to get the report on Melissa and there's an opportunity that maybe Melissa's pressure was actually lower and its wind speed was actually higher. And uh, we've talked at length about why this might be. So I won't bore you with all the details, but the measurements came in from those measurements came in from not the strongest part of the storm. Certainly from a satellite presentation, you don't get much more um, textbook. You don't get much more healthy than that satellite that we watched. Uh, so again, Melissa well into the record books, and it may even climb based on what is found during extensive uh, reanalysis. All righty, guys. Do me a favor, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Hurricane season's over, so we're certainly going to be transitioning completely into winter forecasting and some more long-range stuff. So if you are new here, welcome. Great to meet you. Post in the comments again where you're tuning in from, and we'll catch you next time.